His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa praised the honorable achievements of the people of Bahrain in the field of sport following the participation in the 19th Asian Games in China. His Majesty the King hailed all the sports achievements that contribute to enhancing the kingdom's status on the international level. He also expressed pride in the high spirit and determination of the Bahraini youth and their abilities to compete and assume high positions. His Majesty attributed the sports achievements to the efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the Bahraini youth who work hard to raise the status of the kingdom in various events. His Majesty affirmed keenness to develop and enhance the sports sector as well as sporting all athletes, supporting all athletes in the kingdom to contribute to their success. He highlighted the capabilities of the Bahrainis that are able to honor the kingdom in various events, wishing the athletes and the national teams continued success. Consecutive achievements have been made by the Kingdom of Bahrain and are still being achieved at all levels, the most recent of which was what the Kingdom achieved in the competitions of the 19th edition of the Asian Games, hosted by the Chinese city of Hangzhou. Amid the historic participation of the Kingdom of Bahrain in this edition of the tournament, which included 232 athletes. In this participation, Bahrain won 10 gold medals, 2 silver medals and 5 bronze medals, where the Kingdom attained gold medals in the women's 10,000 meters race, the women's 400 meter race, the women's 1,500 meter race, the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase, the women's 400 meter hurdles and the women's four 400 meter relay race in addition to the women's marathon gold medal moreover the gold medals also attained in the men's 10000 meter race the men's 5000 meter race and the four 400 meter mixed relay race as for the silver medals they were achieved in the women's 400 meter race and the national handball team and attaining the five bronze medals in the men's 400 meters, the women's 1,500 meters, the women's 200 meters, the men's 5,000 meters, and the women's 100 meter races. With sheer determination, the Kingdom of Bahrain continues its historic sporting achievements in the city of Hangzhou. The national jiu-jitsu team member Ali Munfaridi raised the Kingdom of Bahrain's total medals to 18 in the 19th Asian Games after winning the silver medal in the 77 kilogram jiu-jitsu competition. With his victory, Bahrain, Bahrain now has three silver medals to its name. Munfaridi began his participation in the jiu-jitsu competitions in the tournament by defeating the Kuwaiti player Fahad al Marri to qualify for the quarterfinals in which he faced the Uzbekistan player Nortakanov Olsas and defeated him with three joint points qualifying for the semifinals to meet the Singaporean player Bayolim and succeeded in the victory with six points qualified him for the final match which he lost to the Korean player Ku Bonchul. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to shine in the 19th Asian game amidst brilliance that exceeded expectations for Bahrain's participation in various Asian games. With the participation of the General Coordinator of the Asian Handball Federation, Hamad Talib. On the final day, the Bahraini International Arbitration Team, Samir Marhoun and Hussein Al Mot, officiated the final match for women in the tournament between Japan and Korea. The tournament also witnessed the presence of members of the Technical Committee, Mr. Ghassan Amir and Hussein Al Asfour, among the members of the AFC. A major role for the Bahraini caters in managing major tournaments, contributing technically and shining in all the fields. The Minister of Social Development, Mr. Osama bin Ahmed Khalaf al Asfour, headed the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain participating in the high level forum on the second Arab decade for persons with disabilities for the year 20. 23 to 2032, which is held under the patronage of the President of the Republic of Tunisia, Qais Saeed. On this occasion, the Minister of Social Development stressed the importance of holding this forum to continue promoting joint work and exchanging expertise with participating countries and delegations in the field of supporting and empowering people with disabilities. The forum aims to enhance the conditions of persons with disabilities, 
to achieve equal opportunities and their full integration into society and to support the efforts of Arab countries to continue implementing the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and to develop legislation and policies to respond to the needs of this segment of society. The Arab ministers discussed the exchange of Arab experiences and expertise related to the implementation of 17 pillars emanating from the decision of the 32nd Arab Summit held in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia last May, and this is related to legislation, policy, social health, and educational services, and ensuring independent living in addition to the participation in political life, cultural, and supporting and sporting activities. On the sideline of the forum, the Minister of Social Development met with his counterpart, Mrs. Alessandra Locatelli from the Minister of Disability Affairs in the Republic of Italy and the Minister of Social Development of the State of Palestine, Mr. Ahmed Majdalani, where he reviewed with them the opportunities to enhance cooperation in topics related to people with disabilities. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al naimi affirmed that the cinema sector is one of the promising sectors of the creative economy, which necessitates providing this sector with the knowledge and empowering distinguished Bahraini talents in all the areas of the film industry to enhance local production that reflects the kingdom's culture, identity, and historical heritage. This came in a speech by the Minister of Information during the opening of the third edition of the Bahrain Film Festival 2023, which is being held this year under the slogan, Celebrating the Art of Filmmaking, and in the presence of a number of senior officials, media professionals, artists, and an elite group of movie stars in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries and the Arab world. The Minister said that the launch of the Bahrain Film Festival 2023 100 years after the introduction of the cinema into the Kingdom of Bahrain represents a clear indication of the Kingdom's leadership in this field and that the experiences inherited over the past decades will be the basis from which today's generations of creators and artists begins. Minister al naimi added that the festival aims in its first third in its third edition to place the Kingdom on the map of the film festivals in the region and to preserve the role of cinema in spreading our values and heritage and conveying the message of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its culture to all the countries of the world. The Minister of Information stated that the Kingdom of Bahrain has the factors for success in the film industry sector as it has been an incubator for cinematic production for major international production companies since the 1970s. Then the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Film Club and President of the Festival Osama Al Saif delivered a speech in which he expressed his sincere thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Information for his sponsorship and support to the Bahrain Film Festival. The Minister of Information honored a number of Bahraini and Arab artists and filmmakers to celebrate their distinguished contributions throughout their rich artistic and cinematic careers. The Minister of Industry and Commerce and Acting Minister of Tourism, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhro, affirmed that selecting Manama as the capital of Gulf tourism for the year 2024 underscores the important role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in creating an integrated tourism system at the regional level. This came during the participation of Minister Fakhro in the seventh meeting of tourism ministers in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries in the Sultanate of Oman. Selecting Manama as the capital of Gulf tourism for the year 2024 emphasizes the important role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in creating an integrated tourism system at the regional level. Encouraging intra-tourism between the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council, coordination with various regional and international bodies and institutions concerned with tourism travel, culture, and entertainment sector. Developing the tourism industry at the Gulf level, supporting the transition to a sustainable tourism sector based on global best practices. Developing the tourism scene at the level of the Gulf, the region, and the globe, and improving tourism infrastructure and enhancing environmental and sustainability standards. And in related new, the Minister of Tourism industry and commerce also met the Omani Minister of Tour Heritage and Tourism Salim bin Mohammed Al Mahrugi on the sideline of the seventh meeting of the GCC tourism ministers. Minister Fakhro underscored the Kingdom's commitment to enhancing tourism sec cooperation with the Sultanate of Oman and emphasized that this commitment is rooted in the strong relations between both nations and their shared visions and objectives in the development of the tourism industry. The Minister reaffirmed the dedication within the framework of the executive program outlined in the Memorandum of Understanding on Tourism Cooperation, a significant accord signed in October 2022 
between the government of Bahrain and the government of the Sultanate of Oman. The meeting extended to collaborative efforts in joint tourism, marketing, and the exchange of expertise in managing tourism resources. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, chaired the coordination meeting to prepare for the work of the 19th Regional Security Forum, Manama Dialogue, in the presence of the representatives of the International Institute for Strategic Studies and a number of relevant ministries and government bodies. During the meeting, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs confirmed the importance of the Manama Dialogue in discussing and analyzing the most prominent political, defense, and security issues and developing developments in the Middle East and the world. He added that the forum brings together thinkers and analysts to facilitate exchanges of visions and ideas between senior officials and international experts regarding common challenges. The Manama Dialogue Forum is scheduled to be held from 17th to the 19th of November. The Under Secretary affirmed Bahrain's keenness to provide all organizational and logistical facilities for the success of this annual Regional Security Summit highlighting its pivotal role as an active partner in consolidating security, peace and prosperity and supporting the goals of sustainable development in the region and the world. The Chief Executive Officer of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mr. Muhammad Ali Al-Qaid, stressed the importance of holding and organizing conferences and events specialized in the information and communications technology sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Al-Qaid pointed out that the Kingdom's hosting of the COMEX Bahrain Technology Exhibition 2023 reflects the Kingdom's regional and global status and reputation to be held in the field of creating the elements and environment that attracts investments. He pointed out that the role of such exhibitions in enhancing the Kingdom's position as an attractive destination for hosting various events and conferences in the region. The Ministry of Works continues to implement the inspection and maintenance project on the Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Bridge linking the capital governorate and the Mi'arraq governorate in order to maintain the bridge's lifespan. The Ministry is ensuring that the roads and streets of the Kingdom's regions receive adequate care and attention to raise their safety rates and to enhance the efficiency of the road network in order to preserve the safety and comfort of its users. Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Bridge represents a symbolic and strategic importance as it is the third bridge linking the cities of Manama and Bahrain and Muharraq with its industrial and service areas. It is also considered a path for high pressure lines and desalinated water pipes that extend along the path of the bridge from the Al Hid electricity and water station to the consumption areas in various regions of the kingdom. The ministry has been implementing one of its largest projects to develop the roads of the kingdom as the Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bridge maintenance project comes due to the symbolic and the strategic importance it represents and is regarded as one of the most important landmarks in the kingdom of Bahrain. The Dean of the Arab Diplomatic Corps in London and the Ambassador of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, held a reception for the Council of Arab Ambassadors and members of the British ruling Conservative Party on the sideline of the annual Conservative Party Conference. In his speech, Ambassador Sheikh Fawaz stressed the importance of the strong relations that bind Arab countries with the United Kingdom and the aspiration to strengthen and develop them to broader horizons. He also stressed that the existing and constructive cooperation is witnessing clear prosperity in all fields and that work is based on increasing cooperation and coordination in other vital areas such as renewable energy, environmental protection, tourism and others. The British Foreign Secretary then delivered a speech in which he stressed the importance of the United Kingdom's relations with Arab countries, indicating that there are more promising opportunities for cooperation in all fields. The chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the British House of Commons confirmed that the large participation in the reception is evidence of the importance that the United Kingdom attaches to friends and allies in the Middle East. Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Bahrain's ambassador to the UK, also participated in the seminar which was hosted by the Kingdom's Embassy in the UK in cooperation with the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. Sheikh Fawaz delivered a speech in which he touched on the stability of the economic situation in the region, pointing to the development projects and investment opportunities 
available in the Gulf market. He also attended the symposium organized by the embassy in cooperation with the Gulf with the Middle East Council of Governors, in which the Minister of Investment of the United Kingdom, Lord Dominic Johnson, noted the successful visit that he recently had to the Kingdom of Bahrain after signing the Memorandum of Understanding regarding the Strategic Partnership for Cooperation and Investment, stressing that the Arabian Gulf region is a promising region that provides distinctive investment opportunities. In cooperation with the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Financial Studies, Hope Talents, the talent management of the Hope Fund, organized a symposium yesterday on the future of financial services in Bahrain. This symposium included a dialogue session with experts and practitioners in the financial and banking field in Bahrain, in addition to training sessions aimed at enhancing functional and personal skills that would bridge the skills gap in the labor market. The symposium also highlighted facilitating the recruitment of talent and competencies in Bahrain and the growth opportunities available in the financial and banking services sector. I think it's a very good opportunity for us to share our experiences. Uh, we'll be talking about the financial services future and how is this going to be impacting, inshallah, uh, the, the whole ecosystem in Bahrain. Uh, given that uh, financial sector is, is, a, is a very good country, contributor to the GDP. Uh, in addition, the niche questions or what we are going to be representing to the young, young ones and young professionals is how, what are the skill sets that are required for us to actually become, uh, move forward in this and what the future is going to look like. Uh, it was a real uh, good discussion with the groups here, either the panelists or the uh, talented uh, students, which I discussed with them in different uh, and several uh, uh, experience that they have, uh, either in uh, trading, uh, in crypto or in forex, uh, and also having uh, business and, uh, their own businesses as entrepreneurs. So it was really a good experience that I had today. And I wish that we uh, have this invitation always. Um, Hope Talents is an organization that was established under Hope Fund. Hope Fund was established under an issuance decree by His Majesty King Hamad with one main aim and mandate, which is to support youth initiatives. In Hope Talents, our main objective is to support Bahrain's talents. Bahrain is well known in the region that we have amazing human capital. We have the best human capital in the region, and that's our main selling point. So our main aim in Hope Talents is to identify those high-achieving high individuals, upskill them in different uh, approaches, and then recognize them and recognize their achievements, which is the key thing that we want to do. How do we do that? Of course, we identify them through a lot of different initiatives. We, are, again, meet them, get to know them, upskill them through events like the ones that we have right now by providing them the exposure to different markets and exposure to different information to make sure that they never reach to the level of, um, let's say, stagnation and growth, or they get out of the comfort zone and always make sure that they gain new skills. And of course, recognize them to make sure that Bahrain and the region know of our amazing human capital that we do have in Bahrain. The UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, received the Prime Minister of the Republic of Lebanon, Najib Meqati, who arrived in the UAE. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed welcomed the Lebanese Prime Minister and expressed his wishes for Lebanon to enjoy stability, security, and prosperity and achieve development that meets the aspirations of the people. The two sides discussed the fraternal relations between the two countries and the ways to enhance ties in various fields, including development and economy, to serve the interests of both countries. Both sides discussed the latest developments in Lebanon and the efforts to identify solutions to current challenges. The two sides also agreed to take the necessary steps to reopen the UAE embassy in Beirut and establish a joint committee to develop a mechanism to facilitate the issuance of entry visas for Lebanese citizens to the UAE. Saudi Arabia's Crown uh, Prince and Prime Minister, Prince his Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud made a telephone call to the Prime Minister of Malaysia Anwar Ibrahim. The two sides reviewed the distinguished relations between the two countries and the opportunities to develop them. A number of issues of common interest were also discussed. His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman made a telephone call to the Prime Minister of Japan, Fumio Kishida. During the call, they referred they reaffirmed the depth of the relations between the two countries and discussed areas of mutual cooperation between Saudi Arabia and Japan. They also discussed a number of issues of common interest. 
The European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service said this year is on track to become the hottest since at least 1940. Scientists have said climate change combined with this year's El Nino weather pattern that warms surface waters that warm surface waters in the eastern and central Pacific Ocean have fueled recent record-breaking temperatures. The Copernicus finding, based on its records that began in 1940, showed that the global average temperature for January to September was 0.52 degrees Celsius higher than the average of the climate change services between 1991 and 2020 reference period. The institute added that the temperatures is 1.4 degrees Celsius higher than the pre-industrial period from 1850 to 1900. However, such an increase does not mean the world is on the verge of crossing the long-term warming threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius set by world leaders in the 2015 Paris Accord, since that is measured as a multi-decadal average. At least 40 people were killed after a glacial lake burst its banks and triggered flash floods this week in the Indian Himalayas as rescuers searched for dozens still missing. The Lohnak Lake in the mountainous Sikkim state overflowed on Wednesday, causing major flooding that authorities said had impacted the lives of 22,000 people. It is the latest deadly weather event in South Asia's mountains, being blamed on climate change. The Indian Army said it is planning to evacuate nearly. 1,500 stranded tourists using helicopters as weather in the region improves. It wasn't clear what triggered the deadly flood, the latest to hit northeast India in a year of unusually heavy monsoon rains. In implementation of the directives of the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, a Saudi surgical team carried out a complex operation to separate conjoined Tanzanian twins. The medical and surgical team separated Hassan and Hussein, age two, at King Abdullah Specialist Children's Hospital in the King Abdulaziz Medical City at the Ministry of National Guard in Riyadh. The operation lasted 16 hours over nine stages with 35 consultants, specialists and technical nursing and support staff taking part. The head of the Saudi Humanitarian Aid Agency, KS Relief Chief Dr. Abdullah Rabia, said the surgery marked the 59th operation for the Saudi Conjoined Twins program. Dr. Arabia thanked the members of the medical team for their efforts and congratulated the mother of the twins and the Tanzanian people on the successful procedure. He reiterated that the achievement reflects the Saudi medical excellence in line with the goals of Saudi Vision 2030 to develop the health sector and raise its quality and efficiency. <laughs> 